Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host, Doug Butcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience, and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you would like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review, as it will help others to learn about autism stories. On today's episode, Chin Hee Park joins this episode to discuss being a psychic medium and how her autism impacts her mediumship. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Chin Hee, thanks so much for joining me here on Autism Stories. Total pleasure. Thank you so much for having me as a guest. Absolutely. And I'd love to start out learning about your story. Where would you say your story in the autistic community begins? I would have to say two, age two. I was nonverbal and a mute. Uh, and I was adopted from Korea with my sister. I wasn't diagnosed until like around six I started to talk a little bit around five to six, like a few words here and there. But around six to eight was when I started to talk more. So I was then diagnosed with uh, level one AST. You're a psychic medium. And I know because of the fact that one of my family members is a psychic medium, that there are many misconceptions about mediumship. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions out there? So it runs in the family, Doug. So that means you have some abilities too. Well, by well, well, um, I'm told that my spouse is uh, she is a medium, and she says she thinks I have greater abilities than her. It's just a matter of uh, applying them. I I think I was meant to come on here to help bring you out of the the medium <laughs> closet. <laughs> Come on, everyone's telling you. We can't ignore it anymore. Actually, ignoring and denying it is what is what debilitates us. We suffer with anxiety and, and um, panic attacks because we do ignore it. I don't know if you felt me, but I was well, um, before I was coming in, I, I was very emotional. I had to kind of like shut it down because I was just at the diner. I had All of a sudden, I was um, looking at this waitress and she was talking to me, and her dad's spirit kept connecting with me, saying, please tell my daughter that I'm here. And I was like, oh, I'm at the diner. I don't want to give this message right now. Like, I just want to eat. But I couldn't ignore him because he was so, let's just say, if I ignored him, I would have been debilitated. I would have had so much anxiety. So I just finally told him, okay, I'm going to give her the message. So I said to her, um, your dad is telling me that my my you his daughter looks just like him and he says I owe her one. He, she just started crying. She's like that's exactly something he would say just like that. He started crying. He also wants you to know that that he was with you for Father's Day. I she just started crying out of control. So if I had um ignored that, I would have been suffering inside for all day. And I can imagine that that's what happens to you because I'm sure that spirits are trying to communicate with you. And because you're you're ignoring it, I know you're not doing it intentionally, but because you're not opening that door, it's almost like you're going to feel stuff and be affected by it eventually, inevitably. And I'm I'm curious about that. Like when we have thoughts, we, you know, I think like we just assume they're just thoughts in our head. Yeah. What what is that experience like for you? Is that is that kind of spirit and kind of that communication from those that are not in non physical form, or how do you approach that? Well, sometimes the spirits will actually put thoughts into your head. They're trying to communicate with you. So a lot of can I just I know this might be a, a dark example, but. But really, they've shown me that a lot of times, like, people who think about unaliving themselves, 
they 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 hear um voices and they hear things but it's actually not their thoughts it's it's like it's hard to explain but um when they start to hear voices or they they pick up on a spirit that may be committed suicide and it transfers over to them and then they start to think I'm, i should commit suicide like this this is something that i want to do videos on so people can organize their abilities and be able to distinguish whose thoughts are what you know what i mean yes now i like i've said on this podcast many times that energy is my main communication method in the sense that i feel like words very rarely adequately express how um how we how we feel how do you look at energy in terms of communication in terms um of communication well it's all it's like how you say things right how someone like if i say hey how are you like and i have like an aggressive energy or not very warm you're going to get affected by it but if i'm like hi Doug, how are you it's like you get like i'm good thank you it's a good energy so we get very affected by energy i mean autistic even non-autistics get very affected there's a lot of sensitive people out there you don't have to necessarily be autistic but um people really get affected by what type of energy we are putting into our words and do you feel chin he are there are ways that being autistic impacts or helps you to be maybe better at being a psychic medium most definitely our brain is 85% visual, right? And 15% verbal. The spiritual ability clairvoyance is seeing. So we have already that ability to see because of our visual. That clairvoyance, my clairvoyance is through the roof because of my autism. I see too much. I don't want to see an emo mark. <laughs> but uh, that is one huge ability and that's pretty much how I do most of my readings and give most of my messages because I get visuals a lot too many like I said how did that clairvoyance work for you did that just naturally did you naturally just see these these um, things or was it based on intentionally developing the, the skills of being a medium Oh, no, Doug, I never intentionally developed my abilities. I guess they were, I would say I was born with it, but it was in a, there was a, around like mid 20s is when I actually became, I had to come out of the closet too with my abilities because I tried to repress them. So when I was more aware of them was when they would exercise and develop naturally. So uh, with clairvoyance, it was like, my guides would be throwing all these visions into my brain and making me figure out what they're trying to communicate with me. And it took me a, a good 10, 10 years to like be able to get that down pat, but now it's just, I know exactly what they're trying to show me. I would imagine being a medium, I think, takes a lot of maybe energy out of you to connect with those that are non-physical or maybe that aren't in human form anymore. So I'm wondering, do you have specific things that you uh, specifically do to kind of rejuvenate your energy? Yes. Yeah, so let me just give you an example. I do like I do the max four readings a day because that's my limit. After the fourth reading, I'm toast. I just I need a break and I also schedule them so they're not back to back. I get breaks. That helps me to read two and eight for each reading. And then um, uh, I, I, I like to give back. So I do free readings on my live on TikTok for like an hour or two, so depending on how I feel. And then by then I'm completely drained, but I love it. So I don't, it's not a bad feeling to me. So what I do is afterwards I go and eat my fridge. That's how I rejuvenate. I feel like I've refueled by eating yeah, I do eat healthy, so 
and I make sure I get proper sleep. I have to sleep like eight to 10 hours a day. That's how I rejuvenate. And then I have to go out and work out. I have to walk in nature. And that's pretty much how I rejuvenate my energy and stay grounded. Do you see much of a difference between giving readings in person versus on TikTok? Is that like, how do you, how does that work for you? The only difference for me, it's not whether or not I can pick up better in person or anything like that. The only difference for me would be that I get to actually see you in person. It's way more personable. The moment I shake your hand and say hello, the visuals definitely come at me. I just like it more in person because, I, you know, I, I do deal with grieving people. So I like to be there for them and actually, you know, hug them and help them feel better. In, in thinking about energy, I have daily practices to raise my energy and to raise my vibration. So some days I do better than this than others, for sure. I'm wondering from kind of a... So what do you do? So I, I meditate each, each morning, also breathing. Also, more and more being out in nature, I've realized that's kind of raised my vibration as well. So those are kind of the things that I've done. Are there, have there been days where you couldn't get out to nature and you notice that it's a little, like your energy may not be as high? The days when I don't get out to nature, when I forget to get out to nature, I definitely realize like my stress levels are, are maintained throughout the day. Like I'll wake up. And I'll feel stressed and I can't figure out why. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the fear of the day has begun. And so like I need to like meditate and practice my breathing and be out in nature. All that is really good when you get to the root of whose stress you're feeling or what that stressful feeling is, is where it goes away. And I don't don't always figure that out. Oh, I sit there and I hyper focus and I'm like, who am I feeling? I'm feeling something like I will sit there and do it until I finally figure it out. And then I'm free. You know what I mean? But yet most of the times you're probably picking up on someone else's stress. It's empathy. That makes sense. So, yeah. so I'm waking, I'm waking up because I've picked up someone's stress during the night. Um, it could be just uh, at that, like, when you, what time do you wake up? Six, seven o'clock, depends on the day. Is your mom around? No, she's not. Uh, she passed away this past October. Oh, I'm sorry. She, I just picked up on her. She's, she wanted to say hi. <laughs> um, yeah, it could be your wife. She's a, such a good boy. Oh, I'm sorry, don't get me started. Uh, it could be your wife. It could be anyone. It's even like the world. The world, all, everything that's going on, it's so stressful. It's so, like, dark. It could be picking up. Do you actually go to a job? I, I work at, from a home office or sometimes I go out in the community. Okay, so just even... Even online, like, you could pick up on someone's stress with through with through work. Oh, yeah. I felt like it was uh, what, uh, someone, like, one of your um, managerial-type males. I felt like it was a male. Uh, I'm trying to tune in, but um, I felt like that once you wake up, it's, like, so potent. So, like, you can't get it off. It stays with you all day. But when you go to, to your job, to your office, I feel like, that I feel like that's where it's stemming from. I I've definitely felt that recently. Oh really? Okay. Now that you've uh, just identified it and gotten to the root of it, when you wake up in the morning and you feel that stress, you could be like, "No, nah, it's not mine. It's my my coworker, or whatever, my manager, or whatever." That's how you you're not owning it, so it's not going to stay on you all day. You're not owning it. You're actually acknowledging. Nope, it's not my stress. And now you're going to be totally free of it all day because you're not owning it. When you own it, it's going to stay on you. and You're absorbing it. You're going to stay, stay, it's going to stay with you all day and night. You don't come off to me as a stressful person. You feel very chill. 
I internalize it. I internalize the stress. I might look chill. I might look cool. Uh, believe me, it's not, that's not, that's not reality. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, I feel like you're a little more chill that the person you're picking up on is really going through it. I'm wondering from a psychic medium perspective, how important energy and vibrations are to you. And, you know, we mentioned my daily practices. Um, do you have daily practices to intentionally raise your vibrations? Uh, well, it seems like every morning I wake up, if I start to feel stress, I have to target it and then get it off me. And then I have a little method. I don't sit there and meditate like, oh, I like just me waking up and like waking up and staring at the ceiling. I'm in a state of meditation naturally. So I allow myself like 10, 15 minutes to do that. And I'm just literally staring at the ceiling just so I can like feel calm. And then I make sure I drink water and lemon because that is me feeling good physically. And with, um, I believe with autistics, we have a lot of like food intolerances and allergies and sensitivities. So lemon water is great. So I make sure like I like to do the, um, lemon water. And then, and I just like to like tell myself, I'm going to have a good day. That's pretty much all I do. I really don't go all out. And I make sure that I'm going to be kind to people and maybe I'll compliment. <laughs> I mean, just make sure I go out of my way to be nice to someone. One important video that you shared on your social media is the benefits of meltdowns for us as neurodivergent people. In what ways do you think having meltdowns has helped you in your personal life or work as a medium? Don't you feel so much better after a meltdown? I have more shutdowns than meltdowns. <laughs> well, because you said you got to have a lot. Well, wait, but, but I will say when I do release, when I do release what's happening in my body, uh, yes, I absolutely 100% feel so, so much better. Yes, definitely. So uh, because uh, autistic people are very sensitive, which is funny because a lot of people think we're not. Oh, do you know that we actually get mistaken for narcissists? Like, we're the opposite, complete opposite spectrum. We're too sensitive. Anyway, we absorb everyone's negativity. So if someone is saying your coworker's having a bad day and stressed out, we absorb it. It's just, we are sponges. We absorb it because we're so sensitive. Throughout the days and weeks, we are absorbing everyone's negative emotions, feelings, thoughts. We need to get rid of that. So the meltdowns help that. And that's, I believe that those meltdowns are saying, like, we can't take any more. We need to release it. I mean, the way we have meltdowns could be a little more tamer, but we can't help it. Because we absorb so much negativity from people, places, things. There's so much to absorb. There's so much energy. Exactly. If you notice... The world has gotten darker. The The energy is much heavier. It seems like we have to work harder to just even stay calm and not have a panic attack or a meltdown. So it's like we're doing extra work now because of what's going on in the world. And lastly, how can our listeners learn about you beyond this interview? I'm at espsychics.com and on TikTok at Shinhe Park. Chen He, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for joining me uh, here on Autism Stories. What a pleasure, Doug. Thank you so much for finding me. Sending you love. Thanks so much to Chen He for the conversation. To learn more about Chen He, please check out the link in the podcast description for this episode. We always love hearing from you. I would especially love to hear from you relating to this episode on if you've ever had a reading with a psychic medium. If so, how would you describe your experience? Did you know Autism Personal Coach provides neurodiversity affirming support by autistics for autistics? We empower autistic adults and teens to lead self-directed, purpose-driven lives through customized 
life coaching, and community groups. Our distinct approach prioritizes each client's unique goals and preferences, fostering a sense of agency and promoting self-advocacy. Coaches work collaboratively with clients to develop personalized strategies and tools that can help with executive functioning, emotional regulation, relationship building, stress management, and more. We also support parents and partners of autistic individuals by providing insights and guidance to bridge communication gaps and nurture mutual understanding. With our accessible remote services, individuals from any location can receive the assistance and mentoring they need. Join us today to experience judgment-free coaching rooted in empathy, expertise, and respect for autistic identity. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.